All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh, Bahasham, Chakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles, the great most and ever well, peace and blessing to you, like the Israel, Shalom, and above all. Back at it with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh, Lord's will, this video is edifying. All right, and without further ado, I'm just going to get right into it through the spirit. All right, and Yahweh, Shai is ready to save us. All right. And I say us by faith, Lord willing, we'd be a part of that number of the elect. All right. All right. But that's why the scripture said we give diligence to make our calling and election sure. Okay. And let's actually start off with that scripture through the spirit to set the tone. All right. It's like you. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. All right, Second Peter chapter one and verse ten. Wherefore, the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, ye shall never fall. Okay. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shemashiach. All right. So if we give diligence, to make our calling election sure we're going to be ministered abundantly into an everlasting kingdom, man. All right. Through our Lord, Yahweh Bashem El Shai. OK. <clears throat> and uh, let's go into that word diligence in the Greek. Strong's G 4704 Spudazzo. Spudazzo. All right. Strong's G 4704 Spudazzo. It says to hasten, make haste. Okay, and that's what we're doing. We're hastening the day of the Lord. Okay, but the thing about it is when you hasten the day of the Lord, you have to understand what the day of the Lord is all about. And let's get there real quick. This is Amos. We'll go to Amos 5. Amos chapter 5 and verse 18. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. Okay, so that's the thing. You know, there's nothing wrong with desiring the day of the Lord, but you have to understand what end it is to you. Is it is it to destruction or is it to salvation? Okay, because there's a certain number of people who are slated to destruction, and there's a certain number of people who are uh, meant for salvation, man. All right, but for those who are meant for salvation, one has been chosen since the foundation of the world. All right, or predestination rather. Okay. And as well, those same souls that are predestined to make it to the kingdom, they're going to put in the work to do so, man, because Lord has ordained them to do so. And I'll just get a quick scripture to back that up through spirit. I'm going to go to Philippians chapter two. And uh, I'll just read verse 12. This is Philippians two and 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, that is in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Yeah, so it's the Lord's spirit that is within us to do his good pleasure, man. All right. It's not of ourselves. Okay. But on top of that, you have to understand when you're desiring the day of the Lord, when you're hastening the day of the Lord, which we should, okay, you know, you have to understand that the day of the Lord is woe, man. All right. The day of the Lord, woe meaning destruction. Okay. And that's what the day of the Lord consists of. It consists of destruction. All right. Because the Lord, he has to destroy this uh, society and this wicked kingdom, all right? And he, he's basically going to literally burn burn it all, okay? So that he can start fresh, man, and renew the earth, you know? Because the earth is not going to be destroyed, but just the rulership that is within the earth is going to be destroyed, you know? And uh, and, and and if you are Israelite, you know, and you and let's just say you're, you get destroyed on this side, you're going to come back in the kingdom, all right? You're going to be ashamed, you know, you're going to have your head down. You're going to have a, a, a be ashamed for a long, long time because, you know, you didn't take heed to the Lord on this side. But nonetheless, you're still going to come back, you know, but you're going to come back in a righteous kingdom, man. So we're hastening that. We're hastening that, man. All right. And Yahweh Shai, he's hastening that as well. Yahweh Shai is ready to save us, man. All right. But you have to understand when you hasten the day of the Lord, you have to know what you're uh, uh, calling upon yourself, man. All right. It's like, you know, you, you got in trouble. All right. You better go home. You better get an ass whooping. You know, you just like, man, fuck it. Let's just do it. You know, let me just get through it. All right. Let me just get this whooping out of the way, man. So it's the same thing. Basically, we have to 
hasten the day of the Lord, but we have to get the whooping out of the way, so to speak. That's Jacob's trouble with the destruction, so on and so forth, which is really meant for the wicked of our people. All right, but we're going to go through the fire too, Lord, when we be a part of the elect, man. All right. So I'm going to read this again. It's Amos 5 and 18. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. Yeah, why is it darkness? Because those missiles and them chairs, they're going to black out the sky, man. All right. It's, it says, as if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him, or went to the house and leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. All right. Because you can't escape the judgment. You know, the Lord might have you flee from one judgment to run into another. You know? All right. It says, shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even dark, even very dark and no brightness in it. All right. That's the point on that right there. So let's go into this word diligence. All right. It says to hasten, make haste to exert oneself, endeavor, give diligence. All right. It says to use speed, to make effort, to be prompt or earnest. Here's the point. Do give diligence, be diligent, forward, endeavor, labor, study. OK. And that's what the thing is. You have to study and labor. And this truth, man, that's a part of giving diligence unto the day of the Lord, man. All right, because scripture talk about growing in grace. All right, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow there thereby. All right. And uh, Yahweh also talked about feeding the sheep, man. All right, in order for you to uh, successfully feed the sheep, you have to study in the truth and you have to labor. All right, plain and simple. All right, now let's go back through spirit. Okay. <clears throat> Let me um let me just get into the precepts, man. All right. Because the Lord, he he wants his kingdom just as bad as we do, you know. But the most highest word it does not go out void. Okay, as it tells you in Isaiah 55, all right, around uh verse 11. Okay, so the Lord's word doesn't go out void, so he's he's making good on his word, man. But even the most high wants to give us the kingdom. Yahweh Shai said that himself. Luke 12. What do you Yahweh Shai say in Luke the 12th chapter? This is Luke chapter 12. And uh, verse 32, fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. All right. The Lord is the most high's good pleasure to give us the kingdom, man. The most high wants to give us the kingdom. All right. But the most high has to make good on his word, man. All right. So while, you know, the most high is making good on his word, we're patiently enduring. All right. That's why it tells you in uh, Romans 8. And this is spirit because I actually wanted to bring this priest about. So this is Romans 8, starting at verse 24. Actually, let me start at verse 17. Romans 8 and 17. And if children, then heirs, heirs of the Most High, and joint heirs with Mashiach, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Yeah. So if we suffer with Yahweh Shai, we're going to be glorified with Yahweh Shai, man. All right. And what's the part of the sufferings of Yahweh Shai? You're going to, when you come in this truth, you're going to catch hell, man. You catch hell in the world, so you might as well just catch hell in this truth, man. And at the end of the day, you're catching hell to make you a more, uh, uh, um, Fit vessel unto Yahweh Shai for his righteous purpose, man. Okay. Um, bear with me. Okay. It says, for verse 18, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Yes. Yeah, so this little bit of suffering that we're going through right now on this side, it cannot compare to the amount of glory that's going to be revealed in us, man. All right, here it is. These guys, they suffer on this side to, to win an NBA championship, win a Super Bowl ring. All right, and they're so happy about all the pain, you know, uh, blood, sweat, and tears that they went through. But that was for a corruptible crown, man. How much more us for an incorruptible crown, you know? It's, it's, it's not going to be, it's not going to compare, man. All right, it's not going to compare. All right? Um, Slock you. Okay. Bear with me, Babusha. Let me mute this real quick. All right. Verse 19, for the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestations of the sons of God. All right. So the whole earth is truly counting on, you know, the nation of Israel, beginning with the elect coming back in rulership, man. All right. It says, verse 20, for the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who have subjected the same in hope. Yeah. All right. And that's why we go through what we go through in this flesh, because we were made subject to vanity, man. All right, that's why no matter how hard we try, we're still going to go off because we're subject to vanity, which is this flesh, man. That's why the scriptures uh, refer to it as the chains of darkness, because you can only pass a certain threshold in the spirit. You know, once you reach that limit, whatever your portion of the faith might be, all right, the flesh is just going to give up, man. All right. 
You try to you try to uh, praise Yahweh Shai twenty four seven, and I'm talking about literally twenty four seven. Your throat going freaking break down, man. You know your breath. You gonna get dry. You gonna get a dry throat. You gonna need some water. You know that's why we need to get changed. That's why we need new bodies, which the Lord is going to give us new bodies in the in the beginning of His kingdom. All right, and we're gonna be perfect. He's gonna put His law, statutes, and commandments program into our inner parts, so that no matter how hard we try, we're not gonna sin, man. All right, and that's actually truly a beautiful thing from Yahweh Shmuel Shai to give us new bodies, man. All right, man. You know, Jake. Jake is young in this kingdom. You know, knees hurting, back hurting, got ailments, so on and so forth, man. And we're young, quote unquote. You know, and even for those who are up in age, really, like what we consider up in age here in the flesh. But even those who are up in age, like, you know, our parents and stuff like that, maybe in their 40s, their 50s, so on and so forth. By technicality, that's young, man. That's a young age, really. Now, in the flesh, it'd be like, what you talking about? He got gray hair. Okay, no problem. Let me go ahead and get this scripture real quick to back up what I'm saying. This is Sirach or Ecclesiasticus. Um, let me see. You have to get chapter 18. It's Sirach or Ecclesiasticus 18. I'll start at verse um, nine. It says the number of a man's days at the most are in hundred years. All right. And that's why most people, they live up. It's, it's a rare thing. You find someone to live up to the age of a hundred, you know? All right. It says as a drop of water onto the sea and a gravel stone in comparison of the sand. So are a thousand years to the days of eternity. All right, so can you imagine that? A drop, just one drop of water compared to the rest of the ocean. That one drop of water is like the time frame of a thousand years to the days of eternity, man. So for, for, for a person to hit, you know, basically, um, if I'm not mistaken, one-tenth of that, all right, compared to a thousand years, you know, that's young, man. All right, that's young, Okay. So even our family on this side who might reach up to age 90, so on and so forth, they're still babies, man. Because in the kingdom, the scriptures talk about how there should not be an infant of days, you know, and um, how the sinner being accursed, they're going to die at 100 years old. But if you live up to 100 years old on this side, you 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 consider yourself blessed. But in the kingdom, you live up to 100 years old, you're, you're looked at as a baby, man. <laughs> you know, you talking to your seed, be like, how old are you? I'm 105, I'm 105. Oh, you're a youngin. You know, that's, how, that's what it's going to be like in the kingdom. The Lord said the days of his people is going to be like the days of a tree, man. All right. And trees, they live long lives. All right. On this side, you know, in a corruptible kingdom, how much more in the kingdom, man? All right. So the Lord said the days of his people going to be like the days of a tree, man. All right. And let me go back to Romans 8, though. It's Romans 8, starting at uh, verse 21. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children, or children also meaning bunyam, which is sons of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together unto now. Yeah, every creation, right, the animals, the people, okay, the air, the trees, the water, everything is pretty much suffering on this side, man. All right, you know, trees, trees are suffering on this side. The ocean is suffering on the side. The animals are suffering on this side, man. All right, that's why you, and, and the Esau's track record goes to show for it, man. All right, that's why, that's another reason why we need our kingdom, okay? The whole creation groaneth, man. All right, verse 23. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the spirit, which is referring to the elect. The elect are the first fruits unto Yahweh by Shemal Shah. All right, the Lord, um, when you go back into the law, the Lord said that all of the firstborn or the firstlings of the flock, they're supposed to be uh, holy unto the Lord. You know, that's why a lot of times the firstborn child is that is that prodigy child, so to speak, man. You know, because that's the firstborn. The, the Lord, he sanctified the firstborn unto himself, man. So the elect, the elect are known as the first fruits of the spirit. So the elect, um, they're like the, they're like the firstborn, so to speak. Out of all the souls that were created. All right. This is uh, Exodus 13, starting at verse 12. It says um, that thou shalt set apart unto the Lord all that openeth the matrix and every firstling that cometh of a beast which thou hast, the males shall be the Lord's. And every firstling of an ass thou shalt redeem with a lamb 
And if, if thou will not redeem it, then thou shalt break his neck. And of all, and all the firstborn of man amongst thy children shalt thou redeem. Okay, so that's the point of that right there. All right, so the Lord, he he wants the firstborn, redeemed them to himself, man. And, the, and in the spirit, the elect are the firstborn, man. All right? And you see it, man. You see it through the spirit, you know? And that's why the scriptures say the genealogy is not reckoned by the birthright, man. Because in the spirit, Jacob is the firstborn over Esau, even though Esau in the flesh is firstborn over Jacob. All right? Now let's, and or even with Ephraim and Manasseh, all right? Ephraim being the so-called Puerto Ricans and Manasseh being the so-called Cubans. All right, by technicality, Manasseh in the flesh is older than Ephraim. All right, but Ephraim was given the birthright in the spirit because Ephraim is older than Manasseh in the spirit, okay? All right? And then the scriptures say the birthright is not reckoned, or the, yeah, the genealogy is not reckoned by the birthright, man. All right? And that's why, the same thing with the tribe of Judah. The tribe of Judah, you so-called Negroes, okay? Or so-called African-Americans. You, you, more than likely, you, you come out of the tribe of Judah, all right, and Judah is technically the fourth born son out of all the sons of Israel. Okay. But Judah was the head tribe. Okay. So it's all about what it, what the first one is in the spirit. Okay. And our Lord, Yahweh he springs out of the tribe of Judah. It tells that in Hebrews uh, 7 and 14. All right. Also, there's other scriptures where it talks about Yahweh genealogy and his lineage. And it clearly shows that he comes from the house of David. When King David, it's well known fact that King David was uh, of the tribe of Judah. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Now let's go ahead and keep reading. It says, and not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. And the Lord, he's going to redeem our bodies by giving us new bodies. All right. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doeth he yet hope for? So we're saved by hope, right? So it says hope that is seen is not hope. So if you're saying, oh, I hope I get a brand new car, but you got a new car in your driveway, what are you hoping for? It's the same thing with the kingdom. You know, we don't see the kingdom, but we're hoping for it to come and it will come. All right. But what, like the next verse says, verse 25, but if we hope for that, we see not, then do we with patience wait for it? And that's the thing. We don't see the kingdom coming. But we know it's coming, so we with so we do hope for it with patience, man. We're patiently waiting on the day of the Lord, even though we're hastening the day of the Lord. We still are patiently waiting for Yahweh Bashem Al Shai to make good on His word, man. Just as that the Lord is, man. All right, the Most High. All right, this is uh, Romans nine, starting at verse twenty-one. Have not the Potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another vessel unto dishonor? And that's what and that's the thing, Esau. And technically, you are the heathen nations, too. And by technicality, when you go deeper into it, two thirds of our people. All right. But nonetheless, just to keep it on a simple level, Esau, you're a vessel of dishonor, man. All right. And Israel is a vessel of honor, man. OK. It says, verse 22, and what if the Most High, willing to shew his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? All right. So that's the point in that right there. The Lord, he's enduring with much long suffering uh, with the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. All right. So the most high, he's enduring long suffering. He's waiting for his word to fulfill. All right. To put his to bring his wrath upon Esau, man. All right. So same way how we have to endure long suffering. But don't get it twisted, man. The Lord, he's ready to save us. The Lord is ready to deliver us. Lord, when we be part, be a part of the elect, man. And let's get some scriptures to back that up. All right. This is Isaiah. Chapter 42, starting at verse 13, it says, The Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. And that's the thing. The scriptures talk about how jealousy is the rage of a man. So when the Lord comes back, he's coming back with a fiery indignation, man. All right, the Lord is coming back as a mighty man of war, a jealous mighty man of war, man. And that's the thing. Why is the Lord jealous? Because Esau is a... Uh, um, he's basically disrespecting the Most High's bride and the bride of the Most of uh, uh, well, the bride of Yahweh Shemesh Shai or Yahweh Shai in particular is the nation of Israel, beginning first and foremost with the elect, man. All right, and Esau is disrespecting his bride. And scriptures say jealousy is the rage of a man. That's in the book of Proverbs, man. All right, you see your woman, 
going rubbing up on another nigga, you're going to be ready to kill her and that nigga, man. That's jealousy. So it's the same thing with the Lord. He, he's coming back with jealousy, man. All right. So you go, you can only imagine what it's going to be like when your house shot comes back, man. That's why the scriptures say, woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. For what end is it for you? Because the Lord, he's coming back as an angelic-like power, man. He said, I will not meet thee as a man. All right. The Lord is getting ready to set up shop and to fuck shit up, man. All right. T telling you plain and simple. Okay. It says, the Lord shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, yea, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies, man. And who are his enemies? You heathen nations, man. And two-thirds of our people. And Yahweh shall said it. Those my enemies, which are not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me, man. All right, verse 14. I have long time holding my peace. I have been still and refrained myself. So just like we read earlier, the Lord, he's enduring with much long suffering, right? It says, now will I cry like a travailing woman. I will destroy and devour at once, man. All right. It says, I will make waste mountains and hills and dry up all their herbs. And I will make the rivers islands and I will dry up the pools, man. All right. So that's the point on that right there. The Lord, he's coming back with destruction, man. He said he long time has holding his peace, man. Because the Lord, the day of the Lord is burning in his heart, man. He's ready to come back and to deliver his elect, man. And to set up his own kingdom. All right. Let's get that. Let's get that scripture real quick. This is Isaiah 63, starting at verse one. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Basra? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. All right. So Isaiah saying, who is this coming from Edom? And that's talking about Yahweh Shak just coming to destroy Babylon, man. All right. And Esau Edom system. OK. It says traveling in the greatness of his strength, man. Yahweh Shai is going to be coming back with those chariots, man. All right. And that's Psalm 68, man, where it talks about uh, ascribing strength unto the clouds. Roughly paraphrasing. Let me get that scripture. For edification's sake. All right. It's like you. <laughs> Jake has some resin in his sword. It's funny. All right, bear with me. Psalm 68 <clears throat> and uh, verse 33. To him that rideth upon the heavens of heavens, which were of old, lo, he doth send out his voice, and that a mighty voice. Ascribe ye strength unto our power. His excellency is over Israel and his strength is in the clouds, man. All right. So traveling in the greatness of his strength is talking about him coming back with the chariots, man. That's why scripture says, behold, he comes with clouds and every eye shall see him, even they also which pierced him. And all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Why? Because he's coming back to bring destruction, man. And that goes to show you that the Lord is not coming back to bring hugs and kisses, lollipops and rainbows, man. All right. Because... Why is it saying that people are all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, man? All right. Those aren't wailing. To wail is not tears of joy, man. To wail is like, ah! that's wailing, man. All right. That's wailing. And that comes from destruction, man. All right. Now it says, verse two, wherefore art thou red in thine apparel and thy garments like him that treaded the wine fat? So Isaiah is saying like, why are your garments red? Why you look like you were just stomping out some grapes? Verse three. And that's representing how Yahweh Shah is coming back to shed a lot of blood, man, in righteousness, okay? Because scripture say in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. Verse 3, I have trodden the winepress alone, and of the people there was none with me. For I would tread them in mine anger and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. So the Lord is saying he's coming back to destroy, man, to kill. This is our Lord Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, all right? Verse four, for the day of vengeance is in mine heart, meaning the day of vengeance is in his heart, it's in his mind. He's patiently waiting on the day of the Lord where he can just, mm, I'm going to come fuck these devils up. Just, you know, you see how we get mad? All right. And, and you got to think about it, man. The Lord said he's going to put his anger in us. So the most high, he's going to fill you house shy with his anger, man. All right. That's why the scriptures say, um, he treaded the wine press in the fierceness and the wrath of the almighty power, man. The Most High is going to put his anger in Yahweh's side. The scriptures say anger uh, was not made for man, born of a woman. 
You know, and that's the thing. Yahweh Shah said he's not coming back to meet Esau as a man. He's coming back in that glorified body, man. So if we get mad in this flesh, how much more our Lord, man? Okay. How much more him? All right. It says, for the day of vengeance in my heart and the year of my redeemed is come. And I looked and there was none to help. And I wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore, my own arm brought salvation unto me and my fury. It upheld me. And I would tread down the people in mine anger and make them drunk in my fury. And I will bring down their strength to the earth, man. All right. Just like the Lord told Babylon, sit in the dust. And the Lord's going to bring down their strength to the earth, man. All right. So the Lord, he ready to save us, man. He's ready to save us, man. Okay. This is uh, Isaiah 62 and verse 6. It says, um, ooh, man. Uh, let me just go ahead and start. This is Isaiah 62 and 6. Man, let me start at verse five. For as a young man marrieth a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall thy power rejoice over thee, man. And that's the thing. If you if you really are into a woman, and you're her husband, you know, and you're or you are engaged with her, and you're waiting for that day where you can marry her, man. You know, and you got to think about the customs of the ancient world too, because the customs of the ancient world was, you know, the arranged, the marriage was arranged, it was set up. Then they had the marriage ceremony. The the woman was uh majority of the time a virgin, okay? And you know, once that once that time comes where you finish the marriage ceremony, man, you plotting, man. You oh yeah, I'm ready to get up in that bed chamber, man. All right. <laughs> get that that token of virginity to her pops. You know? You know what I'm saying? So, how much more the Lord, man? He's ready to uh come save his bride, man. All right? Cuz he's the bridegroom. Verse 6, I have said, Watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. And that's the thing. The Lord has set up his elect, his watchmen, to uh, push forth this word day and night, man. Okay? You got brothers who are 24-7, you know, pushing forth this word in different time zones, man. All right? So I sometimes, you know, I'll be saying to myself, you know, I'm on the night shift right now. I'm doing the night shift because sometimes where if I don't do my lesson earlier in the day, you know, because spirit don't won't probably won't be on me to do my lesson earlier in the day. I say, OK, I'm doing it in the night shift, you know, what I'm saying or the evening shift, whatever the case might be. You know, there's a little something to say to myself in the spirit. You know, anyways, verse seven and give him no rest till he establish until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth, man. So it's saying give him no rest, man. All right, not that Yahweh Bashim Hashai needs rest, but to give him no rest, meaning constantly keep bothering the Lord. And it's not that we're bothering the Lord, but we're constantly, you know, wearing out the, 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 the steps of the most high's door, so to speak. All right, so to, to uh, establish our kingdom. So think about it. The scriptures talk about with the unjust judge. Let me read it real quick. All right. Let's go and get it. Remember the analogy that I just gave through the spirit. Though. All right, this is Luke. Chapter 18, starting at verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Yeah, so constantly, Scripture say pray without ceasing. All right. It says, saying there was in a, there was a city, Slakium, saying there was in a city a judge which feared not the Most High, neither regarded man. And that judge represents Esau. Verse 3. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And that widow represents Israel. Verse four, and he would not fray a while, but afterward he said within himself, though I fear not the most high, nor regard of man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. All right, so give him no rest, okay? Because we're continually coming before the Lord. Whether we're praying, we're crying out to the Lord, you know, we're fasting, we're doing the work, all right? We're complaining in our spirit about this kingdom. That's us continually wearing the Lord, man. Even though the Lord doesn't get tired. All right. Verse six. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge saith, And shall not the most high avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them. All right. So going back to him being long suffering. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the son of man cometh, shall he find faith on earth, man. All right. So, yeah, the Lord, he ready to save us. Say he's going to avenge them speedily, man. All right. So that's the point on that right there. Now let's go back to Isaiah 62 real quick. It's Isaiah 62. 
And uh, verse 6, I'll read it again. I have said, Watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence and give him no rest till he establish until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. So has Jerusalem been established in a praise in the earth? Not yet, man. So we're not going to give the Lord rest. Lord willing, we endure until the end, man. Because that's the thing about this. In order to be saved, you must endure until the end, man. All right. And let me get that scripture. This is Revelation chapter 2 and uh, verse 25. But that which you have ready, I have already. Hold fast till I come. What do we have? We have this truth, man. And we have to hold fast to this truth till Yahweh comes back, man. All right. Let's go to uh, Matthew 24 and verse 13. It says, but he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved, man. So you have to endure to the end in order to be in order to be saved. Okay. Now, let me see. I got maybe about a couple more precepts. And I'll probably close out with that, Lord's will. You know, through the spirit. This is Second Ezra chapter 14. And verse 15, it says, I'll start at verse um second Ezra 14 and 13. It says, Now therefore, set thine house in order and reprove thy people. Comfort such of them. Let me actually start at um Let me start at verse 15. All right, second Ezra 14 and 9. For thou shalt be taken away from all, and from henceforth thou shalt remain with my son, and with such as be like thee until the times be ended. All right, so Ezra, he was going to come back in the spirit, man. All right, verse 10. Okay, it says, For the world have lost his youth, and the times begin to wax old. And that's the spirit, because we were just doing a lesson on that yesterday, man. The earth is not yielding forth her strength unto Esau, man, because that was a curse that the Lord put upon Cain. All right. And that's why a lot of stuff on this side is weaker, man. All right. But when we come back in rulership, everyone is going to rejoice, including the planet Earth, man, in all things that are therein. That's why the Lord says he's going to make the place of his feet glorious. All right. And the Lord's uh, scripture say the earth is his footstool. Heaven is his throne. The earth is his footstool. So he says he's going to make the place of his feet glorious, meaning he's going to renew the earth and make it glorious again. All right. It says, verse 11, for the world is divided into 12 parts and the 10 parts of it are gone already in a half of a 10th part. All right. So back during the time around Ezra's time, the earth was about nine and a half, uh, 9.5 thousand years old, man. All right. If you can receive it. OK, so now in the times that we're coming into, OK, the earth is is, is, is roughly around 12,000 years old, man. All right. Around that time frame. OK. It says now, therefore, because Ezra's um, Ezra's time frame was only a, if I'm not mistaken, let's see, let's see, um, bear with me, Bob Shah. Because when Ezra was on the scene, all right, Yahweh Shai's um, uh, Yahweh Shai came in that ten thousand year, you know. So here we are, two thousand years later, you know, the Lord, he, um, the Lord, it's like you. Let me, let me. Gather my thoughts together. Yahweh Shai came in that 10,000 year. All right. So when Ezra was on the scene, uh, Yahweh Shai came about a couple hundreds of thousand years later. All right. A couple hundred years later. later and then Yahweh Shai came in that 10,000 year. And now here we are uh, 2,000 years later, man. All right. That's what the Lord said. In the third day, he will raise us up, man. Okay. And we're, and we're in the third day. Okay. Because from zero to 1,000 is one day. All right. And from 1000 to 2000 is two days, technically. So from 2000 moving forward is technically three days, man, if you can receive it. All right. Now it says now, therefore, let me go down to verse 13. Now, therefore, set thine house in order and reprove thy people. And that's what we're doing through the spirit. We're setting our house in order, man. It says and reprove thy people, meaning we're correcting our people. And comfort such of them that as be in trouble and now renounce corruption. And when you go into that word renounce, it means to protest against. And that's what we're doing when we go on the highways and byways. We're protesting against corruption. Verse 14, let go from thee mortal thoughts. Cast away the burdens of man. Put off now the weak nature. All right. And that's what we're doing through the spirit day by day. Killing off the old man. Verse 15, and set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee. And haste thee to flee from these times, man. And that's what we're doing. We're hastening the day of the Lord, man. So how much more you have about Shemiel Shai? All right. Now let me get this last precept, of the Lord willing. And I'll close out. It's 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 12. I'll start at verse 10. 2 Peter 3 and verse 10. 
I'll start at verse eight. Not Salaki. <laughs> I'll start at verse um. Let me start at verse six. Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So the first death that you read about in Revelation, the first death was when the world got flooded. But the second death is when the Lord is going to flood the earth via fire, man. All right. Verse eight. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. All right, also Psalms 90 and 4 tells you a thousand years are but yesterday in thy sight, roughly paraphrasing that. And so when this, when you go back to Genesis where it talks about the earth being made in a six days and on the seventh day the power is rested, that's talking about 6,000 years, and on the 7,000 years the power is rested, man. All right, verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, referring to the elect, man. So once the elect are sealed, that's when, you know, the end shall come, man. All right. And we're approaching these times, man. OK. And that says the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, man, because some people might think when the Lord coming back, you know, they might think he's slack concerning his promise. But the Lord is not slack. He's long suffering, man. All right. As we read earlier. OK. Verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness, man? All right. So seeing that this earth is about to be destroyed, what manner of persons are we to be? We ought to put on as the elect, man. Like it tells you in Colossians, the third chapter, we ought to put on qualities of the elect, man. That's what type of uh, conversation we ought to be in all holy conversation and godliness. Verse 12. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of Yahweh Bashem al Shai, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, man. All right, so we're looking for and hastening the day of the Lord, as uh, and how much more Yahweh Bashem al Shai, okay? Okay, because the Lord said that we cannot love his creature more than him, you know. So if we're hurting and we're feeling bad for the, you know, the, the elect. Israel, okay, because even though two thirds is wicked, we still want to see two thirds in a better condition that they are, or at least the majority of us, man. All right, you know, and they're gonna have to fucking die, rightfully so. But we still would rather see two thirds in shame in the kingdom than be on this side living it up in folly, man. Okay, at least I'll speak for myself, you know. But nonetheless, and I'm sure a lot of other brothers agree with me. But nonetheless, it says, and nevertheless, we, according to His promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwells righteousness, man. All right. Verse 14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things. So seeing that we're desiring the day of the Lord, it says be diligent. Going back to what we read earlier. Be, give diligence to make your call and election sure that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. All right. Yes. Found of him in peace because Yahweh is coming back to bring war. All right. So you want to be found of the Lord in peace so he doesn't destroy you, <laughs> you know. And I'm speaking to myself as well, okay? This applies to everybody, you know? And I'm referring to of the nation of Israel. You know, you heed the nations, you have no you have no chance, okay? You're gonna be destroyed, okay? And that's just the plain fact of the matter, all right? And technically, two thirds of our people have no chance either, man, if you can receive it. But nonetheless, that's really the point. Yahweh Shai is ready to save us, man, all right? But if, as we are hastening the day of the Lord, we are to prepare ourselves for that day so that when that day comes, we'll have confidence in that day, man. All right, like the Apostle Paul said, let me get the scripture real quick. All right. This is 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 8. I'll start at verse 7. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Going back to he that endureth the end, the same shall be saved. Verse 8. Henceforth, there is a crown, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only. But unto them also that love his appearing. All right. So what will make you love the Lord's appearing? By doing that which is pleasing in his sight. Okay. Because you'll have that confidence that when he comes back, he's going to save you. Plain and simple, man. So with that, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakhakwadash. Double honors to the ills and apostles, the great most and ever will. Peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom and a Baba Ball. All right. Shalom.